How's it going, dudes? America loves its board games. They exist as a fun little distraction and a chance to get a break from the old rise and grind. There are also a metric buttload of different types of games out there to play, and a good way to sort them out is on how long it will take to complete one game. Here, I've made this uh, handy dandy chart to help the visual learners out there. Over here, you've got your shorties like Trouble, Checkers, and Candyland for your normal board game fans. And on the other side, you've got games like Monopoly, Risk, and Talisman for the freaks like me willing to sink six hours into one game. So, you can imagine how excited my sick, twisted brain got when I stumbled upon a game that fell uh, right about here. This is the Campaign for North Africa, The Desert War, 1940 to 43. And it is quite possibly the most beautifully horrific game that I have ever laid my eyes on. It's like when you can't take your eyes off of a car crash, except every aspect of the accident was planned out to the most minute detail so that it also gave you a migraine. The game itself is a war game, similar to titles like Risk, except this one simulates the entire North African campaign of World War II and has been called the most complex war game ever designed. Backing up that substantial claim by posting a playtime of about 1500 hours or 62 real world days. If you and your group decided to meet for three hours at a time, twice a month, You'd finish the game in about 20 years, but we're just scratching the surface here. You don't win the title of most complex war game just by being long. You gotta be deep, too. For starters, the board itself is nine and a half feet long, way too big to fit on any standard size table. Then there are the rule sheets. This is only a slight exaggeration. Included in the set are the following. The historical background booklets, the land game rules of play, the air and logistics rules of play, the charts and tables available to both players, the Axis exclusive and Commonwealth exclusive charts and tables, and 12 logistical sheets for a grand total of this many. But wait, there's more. You also receive 1,600 counters for in-game pieces three plastic trays to store them in, and one six-sided die for the low, low cost of whatever eBay is charging for it because they don't make this game anymore. But enough about that, we need to get this game schmoovin' if we're gonna finish it in the next 20 years, so how do you play? Well, first find nine other humans as clinically insane as you are, and divide into two teams of five. Everyone will control a different segment of your army based on the position that they are given. And after everything is set up, I have no effing idea how you are supposed to play this game. Seriously, I have looked around and tried to make sense of the different moving parts, and the only substantial piece of information that I have been able to find is that you should not play as Italy. Why should you avoid choosing Italy? Well, my friend, Allow me to introduce to you the single most ridiculous board game rule that I have ever had the pleasure to come across. The pasta point. Based on the real-world usage of pasta in Italian rations during World War II, Italian battalions in this game require an extra point of water, the pasta point, so that they can cook the pasta in their food. Italian battalions that do not receive their pasta point have a chance to immediately become disorganized and become practically useless until they get one. You know what? There is so much weird and dumb information surrounding this game as a whole that I'm just gonna relay a bunch of it at you back to back in an attempt to give you whiplash. Ready? Let's go. The creator, Richard Berg, was originally only supposed to design the game's map, but after the entire design team quit after six months, he decided to just finish it himself over the next two years. The playtest team never actually finished a game to see if it was balanced or not, and Berg said that if anyone told them that it was unbalanced, that they should say, we think it's your fault, play it again. One part of the game that consistently draws fans ire is the flight combat, which is handled as individual planes with individual pilots. Berg has commented on his flight system, saying that it quote, sucks. The game allows for soldiers to defect, and if the right conditions are met, the new militia could theoretically beat the other two player-controlled teams. When asked about the game, Berg said that the point was that it was kind of fun to play for a couple weeks or a couple months. After that, get a life. 
At the time of this recording, there have been zero documented cases of anyone actually finishing the game. Well, there you have it, folks. If you've got 20 years to spare, here is your chance to make quite literal history. Just make sure to stock up on those pasta points. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day.